In this and the next video, I am going to talk about this thing called 1 over f. It's often called 1 over f. And it, it refers to the structure of the power spectrum of brain dynamics. And not only brain dynamics, many physical and biological systems exhibit features, spectral features, that approximate a 1 over f-like distribution. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. I've already introduced this idea of 1 over f in the very beginning of this course when I talked about simulating pink noise or 1 over f noise. And what I'm going to focus on in this video is, is explaining why these 1 over f dynamics provide a potential confound for looking at short time, so short lasting phasic EEG time frequency features, in particular power. And I'm going to start by just giving you an illustration with real data. So what you see here is time frequency power from some electrode. And now the uh, analyses are all the same. So the data are the same between these two plots. The wavelets are the same. The frequencies are the same. The number of cycles and all the wavelets are the same. Everything is the same, except here I'm just plotting raw power. And here I am plotting a decibel normalized power. So this is a normalization that removes the 1 over f from the data. I'm going to talk more about decibel and what it means and how you compute it. I'll show you the formula later in this video. And that's going to be also the main topic for the next video. But for now, suffice it to say that this is raw power. This is normalized power. This is normalized for the 1 over f. And they look really different, don't you think? There are entire features in this plot that are just not visible here. And to be clear, all of these features that you everything you see in this plot is also in this plot. It is technically here, but it is obscured by this 1 over f power structure, which you see essentially as the fact that towards lower frequencies you have darker colors and towards higher frequencies you have colder colors. So the power is decreasing, the power of these time frequency dynamics is decreasing with increasing frequency. That is the 1 over f. And here we've removed the 1 over f. So now you can see these more subtle and possibly interesting and cognitively relevant features of the data. Okay, so now let me talk a little bit about 1 over f, which is also sometimes called scale-free activity or scale-free organization. And it's also sometimes called fractal dynamics or fractal organization. So imagine we have a network that looks like this. And each of these circles corresponds to nodes. And these are the connections between the nodes. So let's imagine that the size of these circles corresponds to some physically meaningful thing. Maybe, you know, these are airports. These are airport routes. And uh, these larger circles would correspond to big airports like Heathrow and Schiphol, and these medium-sized airport uh, circles are like smaller airports, and these are tiny little local airports. So I could ask you the question, what is the average size of an airport? Technically, th th you know, you could compute the average. It would be, you know, there's two of these larger circles, four of these medium-sized circles, and what do we have? Six of these smaller circles. Now, you could compute the average of the size of a circle. But in this case, the average is not really reflective of what's going on here. The average is not really a good measure of the organization of this system. Really what's happening is we have a small number of large things, large nodes, a, a larger number of medium-sized nodes, and an even larger number of really small nodes. So. In other words, the size of the nodes is related to their frequency, and that is characteristic of a scale-free network. Here you see another example of a scale-free organization. What you're looking at here is a plot of the magnitude of earthquakes as a function of the frequency of earthquakes. And so what you see is that when earthquakes are really, really big, really, really powerful earthquakes, are very, very rare. They don't often happen. They don't even happen once a year. They happen, you know, once every 10 years or so. And as the magnitude of the earthquake gets smaller, then the frequency increases. So, you know, every day, multiple times a day, there are tiny, tiny earthquakes somewhere in the world. I don't know what the 
geography is for this paper. So again, I could ask you the question, what is the average size of an earthquake? And technically, you could plug in an algorithm, you could add up all of these magnitudes and divide by n, and you would get an average result. But that average result is not characteristic. There is no particular unique characteristic value that provides an accurate assessment or indicator of the central tendency of this distribution. This distribution has no unique central tendency. And again, that is characteristic of scale-free networks, also sometimes called fractal networks, and they're colloquially referred to as one over F because you see, so in this case it would be, yeah, well, F would be magnitude, so maybe we could call it one over M here. I have already discussed, and you have seen several times, that brain activity dynamics often follow this 1 over F characteristic, where there's more energy at low frequencies and less energy at higher frequencies. So this is noise. Here you see some 1 over F noise. This is white noise, which does not have a 1 over F structure. And it's pretty easy to tell which one, or you know, to, to guess which one looks more like it could be biological. 1 over F noise looks more biological because many biological signals have this kind of organization, this kind of temporal structure. So why is this a problem for doing time frequency analyses? It's a problem because, so this is these are frequencies here. Imagine you wanted to know whether there is more energy in this frequency, uh, let's say in this frequency, than in this frequency. With this 1 over F thing, obviously the answer is yes, there's always more energy in lower frequencies, not always, but there's generally more energy in lower frequencies than there is in higher frequencies. So that's not a very interesting way to interpret the data. What we want to know is, is there more you know, task relevant? Let's say you're, you're doing a, a, a memory uh, study. So you want to know, is the change in energy that is specifically related to memory processing greater in this frequency or in this frequency? That is a meaningful scientific question, but it's really difficult to answer with this 1 over F. So we need to figure out how to deal with this 1 over F, how to remove it so that we can focus on the more phasic or temporally windowed dynamics. Okay, and but that is not to say that all this 1 over F stuff is just an artifact and it's meaningless, it's trivial, we necessarily have to get rid of it. That is not the case. In fact, there's quite a bit of literature in the neuroscience field, and this is just two papers, but there must be hundreds of papers, showing that these 1 over F dynamics are actually relevant for understanding features of the brain. So here you see, for example, power spectra, in young adults and older adults, and clearly they differ in this 1 over F shape. So younger adults have a steeper 1 over F, and older adults have a shallow 1 over F. These 1 over F, or scale-free dynamics, have also been related to brain diseases, for example, schizophrenia and Alzheimer's. So I don't want to make the case that this 1 over F business is an artifact and it means that there's something wrong with your data. In fact, all this 1 over F stuff is telling us something important about how the brain is built. This is telling us about how the brain is structured, that there is this kind of scale-free organization both in time and in space. And that is a super fascinating aspect of how the brain works. However, these 1 over F dynamics are changing over really long timescales, like hours to weeks to years to decades. That is a very different timescale from what we are generally looking at with cognitive electrophysiology. So essentially, what, uh, what to do about this 1 over F? Well, you have two options. You can embrace it, and that means you are focusing on long timescale traits or dynamics. Again, these are... Uh, features of the data that are uh, changing, that are modulating, at best over the course of minutes, and really over the course of, of decades. But on the other hand, if you are interested in studying something that is more phasic, like specific brain responses to processing 
visual stimuli or you know trying to remember a list of numbers for example then in that case this 1 over f feature of the data is essentially uh, presenting an artifact that's going to make it difficult for you to do your analyses and interpret your results so therefore you have to fight it and that's basically what we are going to do you want to remove the 1 over f from the data in order to focus on fast time scale dynamics so things that are changing in the brain on the time scale of tens to hundreds of milliseconds to a few seconds okay so how do we go about fighting this how do we remove the 1 over f we are going to take a hint from this guy alexander graham bell this is actually a really old picture this is well over a hundred years old this picture but it's funny because you know you look at him now and you think he's just some you, you think this is like a, a instagram picture of some hipster barista from brooklyn but anyway uh, this guy is Alexander Graham Bell. He invented the telephone, which is not a bad life achievement. I would actually like to take a pause in the lecture, go on a small tangent just to give you two quotes from Alexander Graham Bell that I really like. So here's the first quote. There are no unsuccessful experiments. Every experiment contains a lesson. If we don't get the results anticipated and stop right there, it is the man that is unsuccessful not the experiment. And, you know, by man, we can say that he is referring to mankind, not in particular men and not women. So it is the scientist, it is the researcher that is unsuccessful, not the experiment. This quote, I think, is always relevant for dealing with the frustrations of scientific research, but it is particularly prescient for our time in history in psychology and neuroscience where we are dealing with issues of replication and reproducibility. So when you are trying to reproduce a published result, if you are unable to reproduce that result, that is not a failure, that is an unsuccessful experiment. That's a, a slightly different but important way of rephrasing these kinds of um, non-replications. Anyway, here is another quote that I like. The day will come, he wrote this in 1906, so over 100 years ago. The day will come when the man or woman, the person at the telephone, will be able to see the distant person to whom he or she is speaking. I love this quote because basically Alexander Bell predicted Skype a hundred years before it actually came around. Okay, so with that tangent aside, Bell's solution, which is what we are going to adopt, is to compute a ratio of activity, of time frequency power. So we call this a bell named after Alexander Graham Bell, and it's a decibel because it's multiplied by 10, so then there's 10 of these bells. So here is the formula for a decibel. It is 10 times the log 10 of this ratio, the activity over the baseline. And this is referring to power. So this is time frequency power divided by time frequency power at the same frequency in some baseline time window. Now, the key part of this formula here is activity divided by baseline. This 10 log 10 stuff is more convention that we can call it a decibel, but this is really the important part, activity divided by the baseline. And what is the effect of that? Well, that transforms this plot into this plot. And now I wanna show you another plot just to uh, highlight that it's not always so dramatic. So I picked this particular channel because I was looking through a bunch of channels and I found that this one shows a really, really visually striking difference between the raw power and the dB normalized, decibel normalized power. Here you see another example where the raw time frequency power and the decibel normalized time frequency power look a little bit different. You can see they're not exactly uh, the same. There are still some features in this plot that are difficult to visualize in this plot, but it's also not such an extreme difference between these two. So, you know, it depends a bit on the data, whether it's the, the 1 over f is really obscuring the features of the signal or whether it's only improving the features uh, that are already visible in the spectrum. Okay, so with that as background and with that as the simple formula for how to compute decibel power, I'm now going to talk in the next video about how to select the baseline time window. You will see it's not a trivial parameter in the analysis.